Glory to God. Ha. Hallelujah. You know, one of the interesting things about the new wine is actually intoxication. <laughs> Woo! Glory. What did I say? One thing about the new wine is what? Is intoxication. Glory. Someone rejoice in the house this morning. really and you know this day this is a very interesting time and season so um you know ever since um we talked about the new wine and this picture will not leave my heart this picture will not leave my heart it's a picture of um an overflow of wine so what i see is you know wine being you know being released in the atmosphere being released upon people being released even upon the nation being released over every situation being released over whatever it is being released everywhere and it just keeps flowing and not stop seeing that picture even up until now i still see it hallelujah you know and i'm going to read the scripture over over us because it's you know when you talk about new wine actually the blessing of god is involved of course the spirit of god is a priority here but the blessing of god is involved if you look at isaiah chapter 28 we'll still sit down please but let's just look at this together okay so isaiah 25 verse 6 to 7 this is what the lord is preparing for us today hallelujah okay isaiah 25 verse 6 to 7 it says and in this mountain what mountain are we mount zion hallelujah he said and in this mountain the lord of hosts will make for all people a what a feast of choice pieces a feast of wines on the lease of fat things full of marrow of well refined wines on the lees. that means that it does not end the wine keeps brewing glory to god okay and then it says and it will destroy on this mountain the surface of core of the covering cast off of the people the veil that is spread over all the nations hallelujah that means that we are gaining sight we are seeing you know that thing that seems to be confusing you're gaining sight you have understanding amen all right now go on to Joel 2 from verse 18 now this one is a bit of a long read but trust me it is for the it's for the house hallelujah so Joel chapter 2 from verse 18 to 27 Let's just go ahead together. Joel chapter 2, verse 18 to 27. I'll read. He said, Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. This is for Nigeria also. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send what you grain and new wine and oil, and you'll be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nation, but I will remove far from you the northern army and will drive him away into a barren and desolate land with his face toward the east sea and his back towards the western sea. And his tent will come up, and his foul odor will rise because he has done most of the things. So, that which is ravaging Nigeria is being taken away in the name of Jesus. Then verse 1 says to the house of Zion, it says, Fear not, O land, be glad and what? Rejoice! Be glad and what? Rejoice! Be glad and what? Rejoice! For the Lord has done marvelous things. He says, do not be afraid, you beast of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the trees bear its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. That means that you have the best of yield, even in whatever you do. The best of the land is what is yielding up for us. Amen. He now says, be glad then, you children of what? Zion. And rejoice in the Lord, your what? Your God. For he has given the former rain faithfully, and it will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain. In the first month, the threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vast shall what? Overflow with new wine and oil. Hallelujah. You know, in Psalm 104, the new wine actually do what? Makes the heart of man merry. The oil makes what? The face of man to what? To shine and great what? Strength in his heart. So that's what he's saying there. And as they say, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts has eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army, which are sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Zion, here out of Zion, and I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall not be put to shame. Just go ahead and re rejoice about that now. 
we trust about the word of God this morning, for indeed, he has caused the fire to come, and we surely cause the matter to come upon us, in the name of Jesus, our fat of our flowing with new wine and oil, blessed be God forevermore, for in Jesus' name we prayed, for in Jesus' name we prayed, hallelujah, let's have our seat this morning, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God, all right, amen, yes. Thank God for today, and thank God for this season. Now, first of all, I would like to appreciate our set man, that's Pastor Timmy Opelami, for this opportunity. People of God, kindly help me appreciate Pastor Timmy. And of course, our pastors in the house, Pastor Martha, thank you. Pastor Ayo, thank you. Thank everyone and every minister in the house. I really appreciate God for what God is doing in our midst, and how God is taking us in lips and in bound, you know. At times when I look back and I see how things had progressed, I just, you know, God, I just give you all the glory, you know. And this time that we are in, you know, this fasting and prayer season that we are in, please, I beg of you, open up your heart and just allow God to do what he will do. Because as I said, it's, it's a new wine. And, you know, that new wine is flowing massively. It's, it's, it's causing, you know, um, newness in the house. It's causing wholeness in the house. And I believe with the whole of my heart that, you know, we will see the experience even much more. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Hallelujah. So, um, you know, we've been talking, well, the last series has expressed, even starting from blueprint, starting from blueprint, down into vital instructions on the leading of the Holy Spirit. For me, it just seems to flow together. And now we're talking about what the new wine is, a season where new wine is what is released. So it just seems to flow all together. Amen. And, you know, all of this is just reminding you of the fact that the Spirit of Living God is what is going to be poured out like we have before, which you can see in Acts 2. Amen. But if it, let's just go a little bit into time, you know, because a lot of times when we think about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Living God, how did he operate? What were his operations like? We'll just go, we'll look at some examples in the Bible and then see how it worked. Talking about Joseph, who knows Joseph in the Bible? <laughs> All right. Joseph, remember the story of Joseph? Joseph was a young lad that was sold into slavery. If you look at Genesis 39, he was sold into slavery, and you know, because he had this thing about dreaming and telling his brothers, oh, this is what I saw, and everything, and everything just kept going on and on. And eventually, he was sold into slavery. But what the Bible recorded about Joseph was that even in slavery, what happened? The Lord was with him. The Lord was what? With him. And he had a certain gift. That that gift, at that time, it was, in fact, because of that gift, it was hated. And because of that thing, that's why it was put in, in, in a state of slavery. But just down the lane, something came up, something happened in the house. Remember the story of um, Potiphar's wife and Joseph? Lie with me, she will keep pressing him. Lie with me, she will keep pressing him. But Joseph will keep resisting. How can I, you know, do this and what, and sin against God? And then eventually... You know, you know who the old saga that happened, you know, and he was thrown in prison for what he did not do. Then, right there in prison, what the Bible records, it also talks about the fact that even while in prison, what happened? The Lord was with him. Now, follow me here. The Lord was with him. And then he met some of those guys that were also in prison, and he gave them interpretations of what of their dreams. And just as he has said it, it happened to be like that. Amen. If you look at Genesis chapter 41 from verse 16. Genesis 41, from verse 16. Because, you know, one of the thoughts in my heart this morning is the fact that um, the, the, the workings of the Holy Spirit in our inside actually gives rise to a whole lot of things. Victories uncountable, immeasurable, like that. So we need to actually look at how things have been in time past, even up until now. So let's look at Genesis chapter 41, verse, um, from verse 16. Okay? Okay. It says, So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh what? An answer of peace. Before we got to this point, there was a story with, jo- with um, Pharaoh. What was the issue? He had a dream that he would not rest. And this dream was so significant. Pharaoh had asked people, what does this dream mean? Nobody actually had an idea. And then that was a time where the, 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 one of the people that, you know, Joseph gave a dream about, an uh, interpretation about, said that I know a guy called Joseph in prison. Get him here and let him interpret a dream for me. And eventually, when he went to Pharaoh, what did we see? It is not in me to interpret the dream. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. In that same Genesis 41, 
Let's look at verse 33 to 38. Let's look at verse 33 to 38. There's something I want to pick, uh, pick out there. Okay? Okay, now. And now it says, now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do what? Set a man discerning, select a discerning man and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Now, Joseph wasn't born again then. Jesus Christ was not there then at that time. But however, the spirit of God was what? Operational or his inside. Of which, before that time, actually, he gave Pharaoh the meaning of his dream, which was that, okay, there will be seven years of abundance in the land of Egypt. And of course, seven years of what? Of famine. And do you know that at that time, I mean, what we have today, this is 21st century, century and you know, we have methods and methods of saving food and storing, you know, food and all that. But as I then, there was no advanced technology as a way to be able to preserve food, I would say, for 14 years. Because when the farming started, let's say year one of farming to year seven, then you now have year one, year one of, of abundance to year seven. They now have year one of what of farming to year seven. What kind of technology could have preserved food, not just for the children of, um, of Egypt, also for the nation? Because we also understand that nations, people, were coming to what to buy from what? From Egypt. That's the spirit of God operational on its inside. Let's continue that past last scripture that we read, that I opened. Okay, yeah. Genesis 41 from verse 33. So this was um, Joseph giving Pharaoh counsel. He said, let the Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth, see wisdom here, one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in seven plentiful years. That's the years when you have abundance, okay? And he said, let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of what? Pharaoh. And let them keep food in the cities. Let's go ahead. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine which will be in the land of Egypt, that the land may not perish during the famine. Let's go. So the advice was good in what? In the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Verse 38. And Pharaoh said to his servant, this is Joseph advising Pharaoh. The Pharaoh now said to him, he said, can we find such a one as this? A man who is what? Whom is the spirit of what? Of God. How did Pharaoh know that the spirit of God was inside Joseph? By that counsel, was able to discern, able to understand, able to explain what it was. Let's continue. Verse 40. Okay, verse 39. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as what? As discerning and as wise and as you. Guess what? That is the same word, Spirit of God, operational in the life of Joseph. We're going to look at another example, which is the story of Daniel. Hallelujah. Daniel, if you, look, if you remember the story of Daniel, in his own case, he was, a, he was a noble man, a young chap, you know, when Israel was taken into captivity by the Babylonians. And unfortunately, you know, the young chap and many of his colleagues were part of the whole train that they took to Egypt, to Babylon. And they were going to be, you know, the, the eunuchs, serving in the, the palace king and, you know, learning the ways of the Chaldeans, their literature, everything that had to do with them, they had to learn. Amen. This was not the lifestyle they were used to when they were in Israel. But now, because of slavery and because they disobeyed God, the land was sold over to what? To Nebuchadnezzar, to the Babylonians. Amen. And then what we'll see was the fact that the Lord also was with who? Was with Daniel and his companion. But there was something that they did. They decided not to defile themselves with what? With this king's meal. Because the way it was apportioned them was that these ones that are, you know, that are proper, fine young men, clean looking and handsome and everything, we are going to separate them for the service of, what, of the king. And they were going to give them portions. For about three years, they were going to keep learning the ways of, of um, the Babylonians. They were going to be feeding them from the king's table directly. Food that has been given over to who? To their gods. So they're supposed to be indoctrinated according to the, what, the lifestyle of, what, of Babylon. So, the, so it was intentional. Their, their exposure was what? Their training was intentional. And then David, um, Daniel called this guy. Say, guys, see, we are here, but we know who we are. We know where we are coming from. So we cannot defile ourselves with whatever it is that are given to us to feed on. And then he said, you know what? Watch us. You give us vegetable and water. 
let us eat. So that means that there were other Israel, Israelites that came alongside with them, that many of them got defiled by whatever food that the king was offering. Because at least by record, what we, knew, we, understood, we understood was the fact that these guys, um, that's Daniel, Meshach, Abednego, and the other one, they all together consecrated themselves for that purpose. Amen. And said, watch us. Don't, don't worry. Watch us. Just watch us for a, a short period of time. Let us eat vegetable and water. Let's not eat of this thing. Because one of the things I say, wine was not part of the things that we were giving them to drink. They had food and everything, you know, it was bokoto kind of something, you know. Full meat, full meal. But when they separated themselves, and in a short time, they looked at Daniel and his companion, and they looked at every other person. They were better in appearance than those that actually ate from the king's meal. They looked proper, they looked okay. As a matter of fact, as they continued training, one of the things the Bible recorded was the fact that they were even 10 times better than what than our contemporaries. Also, because they had an excellent spirit on their inside. They had a what? An excellent spirit what, on their inside. Don't forget, I'm talking about what? The spirit of the living God, which was operational back then on the lives of those, these guys. Amen. If you look at Daniel, okay, yeah, Daniel 5. Daniel 5 talked about, Daniel 1, verse 5 talked about it. So in, Dan, in verse 8, talk about the fact that Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meal and delicacies, nor with the wine that they drank. That's the wine of defilement and what? And corruption. So at the end of the day, when the time for show came, which was this? How come everything just seems to be similar to dream, 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 and all of this kind of thing? That means that, you know, in, a t- in time and season like this, the Lord, you know, the Bible talks about the fact that eyes have not seen, ears have not what heard, nor has it entered the mind of any man what the Lord is about to do. But however, his sons, his children, is going to be revealing it to them one by one. Hallelujah. So, when it was time for Nebuchadnezzar also, in the case of Nebuchadnezzar, this, this story of um, Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Remember Joseph in Pharaoh's time, you know, he told his dream and then they were able to interpret. But this time around, they rose the standard higher. We're not going to tell you what the dream was. Nebuchadnezzar said, no, that you all here, because of your gains, I'm not going to tell you what this dream is. You tell me what my dream is and give me an interpretation. Then I will know that you're able to give me meaning to this. Even made it tougher. In fact, by record, it, the, the demand was so urgent that Daniel and his friends were not there. When that decision was made, they heard about the urgency and they started killing the wise men and astrologers in, in, in Babylon. But Daniel went ahead and went, okay, king, sir, can you please give us a little time? Let's seek the face of you. Let's find out. Let's inquire and then we'll get back to you. Now, note, they, they will not be told the dream. They are supposed to know what the dream is. I mean, you all slept last night now. And you woke up this morning. How back? How, I, can, can I walk up to you now, Tonya, and say that? You have, well, by the Spirit of God. But naturally, you will know, you will know. You will know. So, the, uh, the, the, the time came, and then the king demanded answer. And it was, it was a life or death situation. If you, if you, if you don't answer, you're, including those in Daniel and his friend, they were going to be annihilated. But eventually, when they went ahead into prayer, and don't forget, they did not defile themselves. So what happened is that the wine, the Spirit of God in them was what? Was clear, it was not contaminated. So they were able to understand and see and know. So, I mean, if the other guys there, I mean, they already were defiled people and all of this kind of thing. But God actually was created a scenario where his name will be glorified. And then we saw how that, you know, the following day when Daniel came, I want us to read, I like the way they spoke. I like the conversations there. Let's look at Daniel chapter 2 from verse 8 to 11. We'll just read it, jump, jump, jump like that, and then we'll continue. So Daniel chapter 2 from verse 8 to 11. What is talking about the Holy Spirit here? The workings and the operation of the Spirit of God on our inside. Amen. All right. Daniel 2, 8 to 11. All right. So it says, now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Let's go ahead. But please start from verse 8 so that we can cut down time. Okay. Then the king answered and said, I know for certain that you will gain time because you see my decision is firm. So I think let's just jump this part and go to verse 27. You know, I've talked about it. Verse 27 and 28. 
All right. So Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which now this actually happened after they've gone to pray. Okay, and they came back to meet the king, and this, is, this was a conversation. So Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. Let's continue. And I said, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to the king, to King Nebuchadnezzar, what will be in the later days? Your dream and the visions you of your head upon your bed were these. And then they talked they talk about it. So let's jump to verse 40, 46 and 47. He explained everything that happened there. So verse 46 now of that same Daniel 2. All right. Now, after he had explained everything that happened, that's the dream itself and then the interpretation. Look at the response of Nebuchadnezzar. He says, then the king, what, fell on his face, prostrated before who? Daniel. And commanded that what? They should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, truly, your God is the God of what? Gods. And the Lord of kings. And the revealer of what? Secrets. Since you could reveal this secret. A whole Nebuchadnezzar is like saying that um, Biden or so meet with one young chap or something. And then by reason of these things that were coming out on the mouth of the man, he prostrated flat, worshipping him. Please bring incense. Let us burn to this guy. This is not a normal human being. By reason of what? The same spirit. By reason of what? The Holy Spirit. We are talking about the Holy Spirit here. Let's not forget that. The Spirit of Living God was already was able to walk wonders in a nation where he had, he, I mean, Babylon, Babylon was what power by then. They were in charge. So the God of Babylon bowed to the God of Daniel and his companions. By reason of what? This working of the Holy Spirit on their inside. The, 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 the power of God resting on their inside. Amen. We are still talking about what? The Holy Spirit. Amen. And you know, jumping down in time now, and you know, you can look into many other scriptures. Talking about the prophet, even Zechariah is one of the lovely scriptures that we've looked at in, in recent times. About the fact that, you know, in Zechariah 4, he was talking about the fact that not by power, by might, but my spirit, what, says the Lord of hosts, who are you, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, what will happen? You will become a what? A plane. All right? And then one of the things that is not peculiar so the story of Zechariah, also the prophet Zechariah, was the fact that the people were supposed to be building the temple of the Lord, but lethargy has set, has set in. They could not continue. Rather, they were building houses for themselves, of which the way Israel was, was that the temple had to be built for the glory of God's word to be resident amongst them. But rather, in fact, if you look into Zechariah 1, 2, there about, you'll see where it was so bad that even the high priest then, which was Joshua, had on him a filthy garment, devil standing beside him, and then withholding him at all times, like, you know, resisting him. But in that particular revelation that God gave Prophet Zechariah, he told him that, you know, he should rebuke the devil for his sake. And then they changed his garment from old, from filthy to what? To new. And eventually they were able to what? To build the, tem to build the temple. And eventually progress came by reason of what? The same spirit. Going to the story of Elijah, Elisha. Uh, you know, David, Samuel, a prophet that none of his word what fell to the ground. It's still the same spirit. Talk about what else again? Talk about Joshua. We just finished Joshua. We were seeing the Joshua series anyway. Talk about Joshua. How is he able to operate the same spirit? Talk about Nehemiah. Talk about Hezra. Talk about all of these guys. What happened? It's the same spirit. And guess what? Running down into the New Testament. And, you know, even shortly before then, one of the things we could see was that prophets started picking the fact that there will be a time when this thing that seemed to fall upon a few of us and, you know, out of the whole congregation of Israel, just a few of us seem to have, there will be a time that will come where there will be an outpouring upon all flesh, where there will be an outpouring upon all people, where there will be an outpouring upon not even just the Israelites, but as many as will come to him, as much as possible. And so, all of those things what, were built up like that on and on because God actually had a what? A plan from the beginning. Amen. And then we set a time in the time of Jesus when he was going to come. And, you know, prophet said, what has gone? Mary had received, you know, what the angel came to tell her about um, Jesus. Oh, Jesus is going to come. And then you name him Christ. His name is Jesus. He's Emmanuel. Why? Because he's going to take a what? The sin of the whole world. And, you know, Christ was born. And, you know, he was living. 
He had the disciples. And you know, one very interesting thing is the fact that the first miracle of our Lord Jesus Christ was what? Turning water to wine. <laughs> that was the true winemaker. Hallelujah. That, it, was, it was specific. You know, I was reading something. I was talking about the fact that in the Old Testament, in the time of Moses, the, in, when they were in Egypt, on that bondage, the first miracle, or the first, rather, plague that plagued Egypt was what? Blood, water turning to blood, right? And the last plague was what? Was the death of the firstborn of the children of Egypt. But in the case of Christ, the first miracle was what? Turning water to wine. And his last miracle, shortly before he died, was raising Lazarus from the dead. Hallelujah. So we have a better word, covenant. We have a word, a better word, covenant. You know, it just makes me say how that, whoa, there's a whole lot of things to explore when it comes to the, 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 the Holy Ghost, when it comes to his walking, when it comes to the new wine and all of that kind of thing. Amen. And, you know, one interesting thing is the fact that, you know, the Holy Spirit was promised. So it was not a matter of uh, maybe it might consider, it might rethink. No, it was, it was a shorty that the Holy Spirit was what was going to come. Let's look at what, uh, what um, Christ was saying in John chapter 16, verse 5 to 8. Because he was with them and he was telling them that, hmm, guys, I have to go so that this can come. Let's look at that um, 16, John, John 16, yes, from verse 5 to 8. Okay, John 16 from verse 5 to 8. So he said, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your word advantage that I, word, I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So you can see that for sure. It's not a matter of what? Of the fact that the Holy Spirit will not come. It was guaranteed that it was going to come. Amen. Also look at John 14 verse 26. John 14 verse 26 is a lot of scriptures that, you know, I'll put together and we'll talk about. Okay, John 14 26. All right. And it now says that John 14 26, please. All right. Now. Christ was talking about who the Holy Spirit was here. He says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, it will do what? Teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you. All the things what I said to you. You know, I talked about the guys in the Old Testament. And you know, all of these examples that we have in the Old Testament are actually for what? For our example and for our edification. That template and blueprint that has been you know, that has been layered for us to see how this has worked before and then expect a greater one. Because according to um, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, let's look at that also. We're going to do scripture, 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 and everything like that. So Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4. Okay. Hebrews was saying here that God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to fathers, to the fathers, by what? By prophets. Right? We saw that in the scriptures. Some of the things I talked about, about prophet, about, you know, all of the way they understood what God was communicating at that point in time. He now says now that, has in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom all, through, through whom all also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the power of by the word of his power, when he made by when he had by himself poured our sin, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So if this is Christ we're talking about here, and he was saying in John 16 that let me go so that the Holy Spirit can come. So do you think that, that Holy Spirit can be inferior to what is to, to who he is? It is not possible. It was that the Holy Spirit will be a dimension of him if living in every one of us. Christ was one then, you know, the, you could just see him at one point in time. He wasn't split everywhere. I mean, you could not receive him everywhere like that. It was just, you know, like that in the flesh. But when he left and then coming back, he was going to send what? The Holy Spirit, which was also going to be a representation of the person of God and what? And his Christ. It was going to be a full representation. That's why I was telling you that, see, it's the helper. He will teach you all things. It will make known things to you, things that, you know, you don't understand. Help you to solve puzzles and enigmas. 
like Daniel will be able to solve, help them to reveal things, things that will concern national matters, national affairs. It will reveal to you. You will understand it. Amen. And you know, I talked about Christ in, in that light and everything. So if you look also at Acts chapter 2, now this is where the Holy Spirit now showed up. Now after he died and then he, will, he has sent, he told them, please tarry where? In the upper room where you be what endured with the Holy Ghost. So let's look at Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 13. You know, this one actually is where we can talk about the fact that, yes, the Holy Ghost that they've been looking for in time past, that just a few of them had, this time around, is poured out from on high. Amen. So Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 13, it says, Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then, then, then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Okay? And they were filled with what? The Holy Spirit, and began to what? To speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation and under heaven. Let's just jump to, to like verse, um, okay, to verse 12, 12 thereabout. Okay, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean, verse 13? Then others mocking said, they're full of what? New wine. You know, I said that one of the signs of what, of the Holy Spirit is what, is intoxic, of new wine rather, is what, is intoxication. That means that, you begin, like Pastor was giving reference one day. He said, a man that is drunk, that is drunk, that has gone to the beer parlor and has drank all manner of things together. And, you know, when he, when he comes out from his, <laughs> from his uh, place and then he's moving, he's a man of authority at that point in time. He knows what you do not know. You can take that. No, really. He actually knows what you do not know. He knows that he has 10 houses in Banana Highland. He knows that he has the best of cars in his garage. He knows he has everything. But you that yeah, you still not my, you're like, this one is not okay. But he knows what, what you what, you do not know. In the case of the Holy Spirit, what do you do? What, what happens in the same case? We know what, what they do not know. But this time around, what we know are the things of divinity. Hallelujah. It is what eyes have not seen that we know. It is what ears have not heard that we know. It is what has not entered into the mind of anyone that, what, that we know. Amen. That's why you could, um, Paul could categorically say in um, Ephesians 5 about the fact that don't be drunk with wine in which is excess, in which is dissipation, but be what? Be filled with what? The Spirit. Be filled with what? The Spirit. So that you can do what? Because once you're filled with something, something responds in, the, in, in replacement. When you're filled with the Spirit, what happens is that you begin to sing in psalms and hymns and what? And a spiritual song, making what? Melody in your heart to the Most High God. Amen. So, these operations, this working of the Holy Spirit, these are the ways, you know, that we can also target that it works. But another thing that also came to my heart, even as, we were, as I was, you know, thinking about this and just praying about it and all of that, was something that, you know, Christ said typically where Christ talked about the new wine and wine skin. That was in Mark 2, that's in Mark 2, chapter, Mark 2, verse 22. I want us to read that and then we'll continue. Mark 2, 22. Okay. All right. Mark 2, verse 22. But, you know, in this particular scripture, Jesus was being questioned about fasting. Okay? But let me just, let's just start from verse 18. It says, The disciples of John and the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came and said to him, Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees, and of the Pharisees, fast? But your own disciples did not fast. They always enjoying life, you know, just eating and drinking and all of that. And Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Remember when, you know, he was talking about the fact that, you know, if I go away, it's for your own good. So that time, Christ was still with them. So there was no, as it were, need for them to fast. When Christ left, what did they do? They had to tarry and do what? And wait in the upper room for them to what? Endured by the, most, by the, by the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. So now says that, but the days will come when the bridegroom will, will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He now says, no one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece will what? Pull away from the old, and the tear is made worse. And 22 now says, and no one puts new wine into what? An old wineskin, or else what will happen? The new wine will bust the wineskin. That's the old wineskin. The wine is spilled and the wine skins are ruined. But the new wine must be put in the new wine skin. Amen. Amen. So already we, are, we know that there's an assurance that the Holy Ghost will, what, will be released. But now, the wine skin that we receive is now matters. Because now, there was this, it, talked about, it, it made reference to an old wine skin and what? A new wine skin. What did the old wine skin represent? One of the perspectives that kept coming to my heart as I, as I was thinking about it was a, a texture of heart. Now, in reference to the Pharisees then, they had their ways and their culture such that they could not embrace Christ when he came. What they had was that they wanted a king that would come and be, you know, the king of the Jews. They're going to put him on high, you know, set him up and let, them, let him give him a kingdom. Even according to the laws that they had, according to the prophecies they've received, the Torah, everything talked about the coming king and they had an expectation as a matter of fact, the Bible must talk about the fact that by reason of your traditions, you've made effect, you've made the power of God of no effect by how you do your things, by how you live, by how you think, by your mindset and how you, how you see things. So when the new wine came, when the winemaker came, you know who the winemaker is now? It's Jesus. When the winemaker came, and they, they could not understand what he was saying. As a matter of fact, it defied everything that they understood. That no, that it can't be, how can he say this? Is it not on the Sabbath? Is he not on the Sabbath? They could not see that the new wine was here for them to receive. They could not see that something new has come as it was promised. If you look at what it says in Joel 2, after some, let's look at that. That's in Joel 2 I quoted earlier. It's, it's, and also in Acts, because that's one of the scriptures that Peter quoted when the Holy Spirit came upon those guys. Let's look at what it says in Joel. In, let's look at Acts 2 actually. Okay, Acts 2, where Peter was referencing um, what, what was said in Joel 2. He said, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my word. For these are not drunk as they suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Verse 17, I said, and shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on what? On all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall what? Shall see visions. Your old men shall what? Shall dream dreams. Thank you for part of the um, lessons that we learned in the last series. Pastor Timmy talked about this a whole lot. Okay, even the oppression of the Holy Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. And I said, on my main servant and on my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall what? Prophesy. They shall give what? Utterances. They, can give, they shall give what? Declaration about matters. Okay? And I will show wonders in heaven above and stand in the head beneath. Blood and fire and all of that and all of that kind of thing. That's in verse 21. That, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So those guys, that are the Pharisees, as the way they study now, they can't understand this aspect because why they had ways and traditions. They had it to be rigid. So, and let me tell you a little bit about the wine skin. Now, a wine skin, as this way, is made from animal skin. I mean, in the ancient times, these days you have bottles of wine and all clinky and shiny and clean. You don't know wine skin. <laughs> I know you. Would, I don't know wine skin either. So it's not that I know it anyway. So, you know, all bottles and, you know, they just put a signature label like that and everything just looks well cocked and tight. So when you want to <laughs> open a bottle of wine, poof, you know, and everybody, yeah, you know. Those days, it wasn't like that. They had what they call wine skin, which was made from animal skin. And so what happens, you know, why is it that when you open wine, a bottle of wine, at least the few are taken, one typical thing about wine is that when you open them, what happens? It pops. Why does it pop? Because there is gas inside the, what, inside the liquid. 
And the nature of wine is such that there are chemical reactions going on inside, and it begins to what? To ferment. It begins to what? And when fermentation requires gas being released, no how. So if you, unfortunately, if you shake your bottle of wine before you open the body have eruption, poof, everything just goes out of the bottle and all of that. Even the one that you don't even shake, somehow it just has that whole thing. So now, what they were using then was what? Animal skin. So in the nature of an animal skin then, when you put wine into an old wine skin, what actually happens is that then the, 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 the liquid inside the wine skin usually would expand. And so, therefore, makes the skin of the, of the, of the animal to, work, to expand. There's a way they make it. They, they, they sew it, they seam it together, and everything is just all sealed up. But because the nature of the wine, there's what the wine does when it enters the wine skin. It expands. There's a reaction happening. That's when you got filled with the Holy Ghost. What happened? Something started bubbling forth on your inside. Out of our belly shall, what? shall flow rivers of living waters, bubbling and springing forth to eternal life. Eternal life is happening in the, new, in the wine skin. So if it's an old wine skin... That is by reason of, you know, ideas and ideologies in time past, how we do it. It can't work like this. It has to be like this. You know, this is how I know it to be. After a while, what will happen? It can't hold it anymore. What will happen? It will rip apart. Because what? It cannot come and embrace the new. It can't what? Embrace the new. It can't embrace what God is saying. God is instructing. This is the way you should go. Walk in this path. Follow me here. But somehow, what I know, I think, you know, so you have that struggle in your heart at times. Ah, you know, you know, you, I mean, have you seen a man struggle or have you been in a situation of your life where you tend to struggle with God? The new wine is, is brewing, but you're like, ah, based on this thing, it ought to be like this, you're... You're, you're thinking about it. You're trying to figure it out. And the movement is like, no, let me expand. Let me have my place. Let me work. Let me work. And then you have to either yield to that or yield to <laughs> or your boss. <laughs> Thank you. And then, let me, let me, let me give you a definition. So, okay, so I talked about the old wine skin now. And then, in the case of the new wine skin, what actually happens is that, I mean, the skin is still new. So what happens is that when you pour into the wine skin, a new wine skin, a new wine, glory to God, is that because it's new, it's pliable, it's still sensitive. So what happens is that as the wine is fermented on its inside, it is expanding and it can accommodate it. It can hold it. It can break. Why? Because it is new. It is temperate. It is tender. It is circumcised. So I was, I was, you know, looking at it from a perspective of the heart, of our heart. Remember this, the parable of the sower. When it went ahead to what, to, you know, to sow the seed of the kingdom, that's the word of God. And then, you know, it chewed some, it, went, it fell by the wayside. It chewed some, it went on rocky ground. It chewed another one, sowed another one. It fell amongst thorns and thistles. And then it did another one. And then it fell on what? On the good soil. And the Bible talks about the fact that the good soil produced in 30, in 90, in 100 foot and all of that. But if you look at the three others, what do we have? The one that fell by the wayside. In a short time, what happened that birds came to what? To pick it up. The second one, what happened was that because that person received with joy, yes, this, that. But in a short time, because it was sown or what, on rocky ground, on rocky surface, when the situation came, what happened? Oh, the whole thing was caught and, and withered. And then the one that fell among thorns and thistles, what do we have? We had a situation where because of the thorns and thistles, that the cares of this world did what? Came up and, and choked up the life and it could not, it could not um, you know, bring forth. And of course, the one that now what grew on the what on the good soil. So you know that 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 wine skin, that wine skin just kept coming to my heart. That wow, that Lord, help my heart to be temperate, help it to be tender, help my heart to receive the word with joy and meekness. That as I walk with you now, I had to. We, we went into um, back into history, into the whole testament to see actually how the word of God operated in these men, or the Spirit of God operated in them. That was then, and they had that measure of oppression. How about now that we have the better covenant, that Christ in us is what is the hope of glory? So there's a whole lot that God is doing for us in this time and this season. 
this new wine series that we're doing, or this new wine time, is a time where everyone needs to, you know, open up into our heart and just receive. Because what, what happens is that you can actually accommodate as much as you can open yourself up to. The more you, the more you can, you know, <laughs> you know, it was talking about, there's something about living from the overflow. Now, that graphics that, you know, they did, that fine, lovely graphics about wine being, you know, open from, you know, it's been the tap from the vat and, you know, it's just pouring out like that. And I'm like, whoa, soft. I'm telling you, so, so this is just, you know, just <laughs> that kind of thing. I'm like, God, you know, I'm a vessel in your hand, Lord, and you're pouring wine in me. And that wine, like I said, you know, wine is not what, it's not just any liquid, though. Even Christ turned water to what? To wine. So the word of God that you hear on a regular basis, which is the water of the world that is used to wash you clean, is turning into what? Wine on your inside. And that wine, like I talked about, is ferment. It brews. It brews. What does it do? It bubbles. Something is kicking on your inside. Something is instructing you. This is the way you should go. Something is, is, is making you, you know, I remember, you know, some time ago, too. You know, not so long ago, but I remember some, some, some time where I, I walked in rebellion, you know, a little bit. But thank God. <laughs> but thank God. I should tell you the story of my rebellion. <laughs> okay, but you know, and uh, okay, I'll just give that example and I'll make you see how, you know, uh, what happened? <laughs> you'll say, uh, really? Yeah, uh, we had that time. I was still growing then, so don't, don't blame me. Okay, so please. <laughs> Yeah, don't judge me. <laughs> All right. So, it was, okay, it was a time when... Um, <laughs> okay, it was a time when, about the time before I said yes to my husband, okay? So, wait first. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, I know. So it was before the time I said yes to my husband. Okay, yes, we're going to do this together and all that. But... My husband is a, was a pastor, and he's still a pastor, and I mean, I don't want to marry a pastor. <laughs> After that time, that wasn't what I imagined. I didn't dream it, you know. Even though I was learning, I was enjoying God. Let me just know God. Mm-hmm. Whatever. It's pastors, they have their, that's, <laughs> especially people are for, you know, that mindset, that whole thing like that. And then when, you know, the man of God will come, you know, this is what the Lord is saying and everything, you know, I was, <laughs> I was dazed to my bones, like, what? What, what did he say? And I was so confused. And I was like, ah, what, 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 how come? I wasn't sure. You know, and that, that is the reason why, you know, <laughs> we keep growing, okay? We keep learning. And I will say it again, we keep growing at what? We keep learning. And then I, I was like, no, I, I mean, I didn't have any personal, imagine, a preconceived notion in my mind before now. But now, there's someone telling me about this, and it doesn't necessarily fit what I had in my mind before. So, what did I do? I locked up. I don't go to church. I didn't do anything that has to do with it. Just in case God wants to say, ah, boy, yeah, it's like this, or it's like that. I did not send anybody again. Brethren, forget brethren. What? <laughs> what? I did not send anybody again. I just went my way. I didn't want to know. But I didn't want to send God again. God, whatever. I don't, I don't want to again. Just pack everything together in the same box and walk up pass. That was the way it was then. And at that time, I was losing my joy, my peace, because I lost fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the Holy Spirit, God is merciful. Oh, God, God is merciful. And I was now trying to hang out with one particular guy just to palliate the conscience. You know, but we talk about cautious. When your conscience is being, being seared, you continue. Mm-mm. It's like this. You continue. You harden your heart. You know God is talking to you. This thing, disease, go away, stop. But somehow, you know, there's still, at least I've not gone too far. She was just some weeks ago. You are negotiating how the devil will deal with you. you are, it, can't, it can't do much yet because I somehow, somehow, grace covers. You know that kind of thing. I don't know. The serious place on earth is where, what, is where God instructs you to stay. So I didn't even, so it wasn't a matter of maybe the man in question or not. I don't want to send anybody again. Let me just go my way because I never imagined that I was going to be with the pastor and all of that. And then so I will hang out with a slight guy. But in the, in, in the case of that, why I said God was merciful was the fact that we tried to go out. It never worked for once. It never worked. This one will pain me, but mm, we'll still, we'll still, anyhow. It will pay me. We'll try, and the guy was someone that, it was a busy, it was, a, it was, it was um, the president of, of a particular department, national president now. 
And you know, it was busy, busy, busy. I will still find a way. You will apologize. Oh, I'm sorry, this one happened, that one happened, and everything. Okay, no problem. We'll plan that one. So, <laughs> so all of those days kept happening, and I stayed away from the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't want to have anything to do with God. I was actually walking in blackness rebel. Now, I never God had not said that is the word or not. I just don't want to hear. <laughs> I don't want new wine to speak. New wine day first. Because why? I still had an old casing that will not allow the new wine to break forth on my inside. Ha! Huh. So, we, so the one that now broke the camel's you know, back and everything was that. So we planned. So it was, we were supposed to meet by 4 o'clock. I called 4, 5, 6, 7. So, you know, so that three hours, you remember when Christ was on the... Remember when Christ was on the cross? That three hours of anguish and turmoil, where Christ was going to give up his life. I went through that stuff. Three hours of decide, will you stay with God or you will continue on this path of perdition? Will you stay with God? I kept thinking about it. Lord, how do I? Why, what am I running away from exactly? I don't want to agree with God because I felt like that. It, that come on, that God now, far, you know. I felt like ah, that's not. But lo and behold, at the same time, so as soon as that thing doesn't look attractive, here, the devil's like, um, you know, he's inviting you into what? Something else entirely. And I just kept, you know, so that, that three hours. So by the time it was eight, something broke in my heart. Like, there's no point. That's when the brought now. Ah, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I came, and came, came most apologizing. I said, ah, no problem, no problem. Truth is that I can't remember how the whole thing went. But I know that was the last time I had anything to do with him. And so I now went ahead, like, so, so, so after that time, you know, he came to meet me, that's my husband. He came to meet me, I was talking to him about the fact that, you know, the, um, I have all the committees there. <laughs> he was like, ah, it's a new well, I mean, it's a new call me then, anyway. I, I call, the, see, it's not about me now. Your relationship with God matters here. Don't, don't this, don't that, and then he spoke to me so strongly that, see, forget about me. That I, I didn't even say anything. Just forget about it now. Focus on God because I was losing life. Peace was eluding me. I was, I was, I was dying as it were. And then, you know, I went my way and I just needed the time to myself. This is just an example of, you know, what I'm talking about. And eventually, I decided to... I'm sharing this is because it's so synonymous to what we have here today. So I, 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 pray, I talk to God. I just, Lord, okay, you know what? Just help me. I can't do this on my own. I've missed you, Lord. You know, really, really. I mean, we will not, we will not walk in rebellion in the name of Jesus. We will walk continually by the Spirit of Living God. I'm just saying what I experienced. And then I'm like, Lord, just help me. Help me, Lord. And you know, God, a willing Father, always ready to what to hear you and receive you. One of the, um, there's one particular revelation I had one of those nights like that. And I saw a house, a mansion. That you know, a lot of things. It was a lot of things I saw, but this one is, is very very specific. So there, there was a house, a mansion. A lot of attacks was on that house, but after a while, you know, the counter attacks came by the spirit of God, and all of those things went. Then in that, I mean, you know, all these epic houses in all of these you know foreign movies where you know they have a palace, they now have a ballroom. So in that particular revelation, I was ushered into a what? Into a ballroom, and in that ballroom. There was a long table. You know these kings now, when they want to, their dining table is usually very long. And lo and behold, on that table, I saw a flask of freshly brewed wine that was placed on the table in different um, containers and different sizes. It was even a glass jar. For those that did science experiments, you know those, the shape of those jars and all, but these ones were bigger, not your small bottom flask. It was bigger, it was, it was really massive. And, you know, I was invited to a table to come and drink wine. You know, and then it's so interesting that I tasted of that wine. I woke up with the taste of the wine in my mouth. It was a sour, I can see, if, I, if you look at, remembering how the picture was, there was still bubbles on the, you know, you know the, 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 the rim, when, uh, you, when you have a full bottle of wine or so, the rim of where the um, wine stops, or where the level, uh -huh, you have just little bubbles all over like that. It was still fresh. It was warm. There was a sort of warmth and, and, and sweetness and sourness that that particular um, this, that wine had. And from that day on, I knew that the winemaker has met with me. 
and I will not let him go again. I will not let him go. Because what happened? That is the source of my life. You cannot live life without the wine of the spirit of living God. You cannot, you can't, you will crack. You will not, you will not, you will not, you will not continue. My relationship with God was restored, and the other story, we'll talk about it some other time. <laughs> How? Because it's a whole lot of things, so it's an, it's an epistle, sincerely, for another time. Don't ask me what, I, what happened next. <laughs> it's that my relationship with Jesus was what? Was restored. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, the, the old wine. So, you can see how I was walking. I didn't want to answer. The wine would bubble, would do. You would resist. You would refuse. So, at that time, one guy walked up to me. He said, you are this guy. You don't fit. And he walked away. This one does not know God, though. It's not as if he knew anything about it. It was a random guy, you know. Right? He just came to me. He said, no, I see you. It's one guy. You guys, you don't fit. You don't fit. And then left. Because I chose to disobey the voice on my inside, the one outside had to start talking. That's what Pastor Timmy was saying about the fact that if they always have to talk shout to you from outside, you're always hearing from outside. It means that your ear is not, you know, in that sense. Because what? I was walking in what? In rebellion, in disobedience. And, you know, this thing, you can say, oh, how it happened. It's because of what? Old mindset, ideas, and ideologies. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 was talking about the fact that. The weapon of our warfare are not, are not carnal, but mighty in God to what? To the pulling down of strongholds, you know, knowledge, ideas, and things that exalt themselves high against knowledge of God in your life. In your, when you were, when you're being, your upbringing, how were you brought up? What kind of family system were you brought up in? Now, these things, we don't control them. We are, you, didn't, you didn't decide where you're going to be born. You didn't say, okay, in heaven, our Lord, this Many of you, many of us really, if you have to make a choice, you will be born in Nigeria, first of all. <laughs> you will not want to be in Nigeria, but we didn't control that. You will not want to be born black. Neither did the white man choose to be born white. Nobody chooses it. The Lord what makes it happen. But however, it's a falling world, yeah? But in that falling world, there's also, there's, there's also a redemptive side of it. Okay? Yeah, we're in this world, but what? We're not of this world. Uh, is, that, is that my time? Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, Holy Ghost, just help us. All right, so I was talking about the fact that I actually was surprised. I was looking that night, I seemed to. Okay, no problem. So we'll continue. So, yeah, that's, that's redemptive. So, your, your, how you've grown, how you were trained, what, you, what you've always known, mindset. Old ways and methods, that's the Pharisees, those guys. So, you two as a person, traditions are, ah, I'm an Igbo man. I'm a, there's a way we do it in Igbo land. When it comes to marriage, it's how we go. The Holy Spirit is not what is paramount in that decision making. It's not what the Holy Spirit is saying that matters. It's how, you know, and that thing, I mean, for, 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 for okay, thank you for we that were married and those that are coming up, the good Lord will help you. You need to be able to decide whether you want to do it God's way or traditions way. You will need to decide. I'm sure for, for those of us that are married, you had to, that thing called tradition, you have to, you, something has to happen. Is that you bow to it or it bows to you by the help of the Holy Spirit? Because the kingdom, kingdom ways are not, are not the ways of men. So if the winemaker has a way of doing things in the kingdom, how do you want to run your own? Do you want to run in the way this kingdom of this world run theirs? Or you want to run the, the way the winemaker runs it? So ideologies, things that, do not, that, that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. That's why the fact that, you know, you are liable to be a, a carrier of the new wine. But somehow, that now becomes, you know, stiff. So you can't bend, you know. This is how I know it to be. And I will follow it like that. Social media. Always projecting trends that will always lead to an end. No trend has been sustained to date in the time, when it comes to, you know, worldly concepts. No trend. Remember, every trend, there's always trend newly. New trend. Every time you open social media, trend is, I mean, it doesn't end. But guess what? There is a trend in the heavenlies that has been from time immemorial that will outsmart whatever trend in the next 20th century. It will outsmart it. It's more intelligent. That is the new wine. It is more intelligent than whatever system and structure that can be in place. That is the same intelligence that worked in the time of Joseph. It worked in the time of Daniel, in the time of the prophet, in the time of Jesus. And it's still working now. You must align with that trend. The trend of the Holy Ghost. So this time of new wine is, is a time to remind us about the fact that 
People of God, let your heart be what? Be pliable. Let it be responsive. That's why I said it's, the, it's for me the continuation of what we've been learning from vital instruction, leading of the Holy Spirit from blueprint. It's a, it's a way to go. It's a way to go. You cannot but, you know, allow. So if, 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 you, are, if, you're, if you have to always consider, or have to always, you know, rationalize things with, with, with God, you know, God has instructed, this is the way to go. Well, okay, but based on this, based on that, I think, you know, you know what this is saying. I said to download that said so. Once it's the Lord that says so, he's able to, what, to bring you to completion. It says, looking unto Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter, um, that's, yeah, Hebrews 12, right? It was saying, looking unto Jesus Christ. So therefore, that now we have a great, um, I'm mixing it up, please. It was about looking at Jesus Christ, who is the awesome and finish of our faith. Who for the joy that was, that was set before him, endured the cross, and also what? This, except it is not the Lord that said so. That it was one that said so. Even he, Christ, had to look unto, had to finish that. And what was his end? It was glorification. Because he said, I, he endured the cross and despised the ship. And now we see that what? By, so that means at the end of every child of God, the end of every believer is what? Is glory. Yeah. Your end is glory. But however, that walk, Jesus Christ started it. He finished it. So you can help you to start it and what? And finish it. But you must walk with him. Your wine skin must be new. Must be, must be checked at all times. The Bible was talking in, 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 in Proverbs 4. It was talking about the fact that guarding your heart is what all diligence, because out of it what flows, stems the what issues of life. How things will go about you eventually, the texture of your heart, the texture of, of, your, of your mindset, of how you think. When you begin to resist, you know, instructions, that's why, that, 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 that conscience message was very, very pivotal. When you begin to resist, you know, nudges and, you know, and, this way, you know what to do, but somehow you figure it out. We're going, to, we're going to sort it out later. You know what happens is that you are hardening your wine skin. Your wine skin is becoming hard to 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 expand. It's becoming hard, and don't don't forget once again that the wine keeps what fermenting. So that gas is that what is that fragrance that when men see the word, they will glorify God in you. No one sees the light and what hide it under a bushel, but put it where? On the, uh, 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 on the tabletop, so that what the old light will shine across. That same gas that is fermenting in, in the wine is the light that men ought to see what and glorify God. So I don't know, you know, wherever you are right now, and you know, you're, 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 you're looking at, okay, how do I feel? You've gotten a word from God. You know, consult with the winemaker. Christ, I'll finish up with this particular scenario. Where that's Christ in John chapter 2, where his first miracle was, was, was turning water to wine. Imagine. <laughs> the, the MC of the, uh, of the event was telling him that, telling the bridegroom, you know, you know in, in the days of um, the Jews, as a host or as a guest, you can sue your host. <laughs> yes. It's like, go for one bear, Jessica. For one day and food not rich, you can sue the bride and the groom for not, yeah, that's actually how, because it, they, 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 they prioritize feasts, you know, they had seven days of wedding. What so you must have enough wine to what to run the process. So if there's enough wine, you can do all the people that are doing the wedding, you can sue them for not allowing them. Go and check it. So you need enough wine to go. So you want, as, 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 as a single, you want to get married, you don't have enough wine to carry to your union. You don't have wine, though, that will be brewing and that will be able to carry it for, for eternity till years, years, and years to come. Your wine skin is not able to accommodate that which can expand for how long or whatsoever. In your business, you are entering the past, you are wondering, you are using your head to calculate. You are not consulting with the winemaker. Let him brew in you. Let him give you initiative on, on what to do and how to do. Amen. And, you know, in that particular story of Jesus Christ turning water to wine, and then, you know, I like Jesus. <laughs> he didn't turn a cup of water to a cup of wine and all of those kind of things. He turned about 20 to 30 gallons times six. Do you know what that is? That was over two drums of, of wine. You know drum now, that blue drum. Right? In the wedding, it turned two drums plus. If it was 30 gallons... You know, that's about over to, I mean, about, how many, about 680 liters or something like that. Massive. Into wine. So, who are we 
to lack wine. We can never lack wine. It cannot run dry. Maybe that's why that picture that kept coming to my, to my heart from when, we, when, from when started, and fasting started. About wine just being released. Being released. Being released. Why? Because the winemaker has it in abundance. And why is it that it was water, it turned to wine? That water is what? Is his word. Is his word. So it's on top of that, that what? That wine will flow. It's on top of that. How can wine or water ordinarily be turned to wine? Ah, Lord. Lord will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Lord will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. And you know, it, it, just, it just all boils down to the fact that my heart, what is the state? The Lord actually wants to do a whole lot of things. You know, it was seen in Ezekiel. Let's look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 23 to 30. As we, you know, as we bring this to a close. Ezekiel. Okay. From verse 23. See what the Lord was saying here. He says, And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. When I am hallowed before your eyes, now says, For I will take from you among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle what? Clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your foolishness and from all your idols. Then verse 26 now says, I will give you what? A new heart, and put a what? A new spirit. What? within you. That's like, I'll give you a new wine skin and put a what? A new wine within you. Amen. I will take away the heart of stone. That's the old wine skin that is hardened. It says, I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a what? A heart of flesh. That means that a heart that is I mean, okay? And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk what? in my statuses and you will keep my commandment my, my judgment and do them then you shall dwell in the land I give to your fathers and all of that so that means that by reason of the word of the new spirit of God on your inside because even your, 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 your heart has been changed you will not be told what to do because you know what to do he said it will now cause you to walk in the status the instruction of the Lord will forever be in your heart you will, not, you will not walk in errors and mistakes. That things that people clearly fall into, errors that people clearly make, you will not fall into the same errors. Why? Because it will put what a new spirit within you. Make your heart what? New. Make it temper, make it, you know, circumcised. Let the foreskin of your heart what, be taken away. Do not let situations of life. Do not let your, 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 your ideas and ideologies to what to be a stumbling block into what God is doing. You know, it's a very interesting time that we're in. We're fasting, we're praying. This is an opportunity where we can shed off the old wineskin in our lives. Where those things that seem to be, this is the way to go about it. This is, how, this is what I've always known. This, for some of us, it's not as if you want. It's just how you grew up to see life. Is how you and somehow the Holy Spirit notice you in that no, it can be like this. But you're wondering how, how does this work exactly? He says, no, no, but put a new spirit within you. Give you a new heart. Change the one that is hardened to a what to be suffering. That conscience that is seared is going to what revitalize it again. You're able to know wrong from right. You're able to know what to do and what not to do. What seems to be attractive and people are falling to it. You're able to take a stand against it and win. Daniel's time, it looked as if they were losing out initially when you are, they serve bokoto and everything. You, you are eating you are eating effort or something like that. You are doing vegetarian mood. You are not eating, you know, better food with um, wine and all of that. At that point, they look as if that they were losing out. They almost look at it. But in, on the long run, they were the ones that were winning. They could solve, they could solve problems. And that was a national problem. That is solved right there. It was a national, likewise, Joseph, so it was a national continental problem that we're solving by the same spirit. And that spirit is what is working on our inside. 
God, you will make my heart sensitive. You will make my heart pliable. You will make my heart flexible for the move of the Spirit of God on my inside. Oh, Jesus. You will make our hearts tender at all times. Tender. Tender, Lord. Tender. Oh, Jesus. You will make my heart tender. Paul was talking, he was talking about the fact that, you know, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and died for me. Lord, you will make our hearts tender again. In this time where you are releasing new wine, Lord, our hearts are made new, are made fresh, and we are freshened. Whatever situation might have held us down and made us see things that are not possible, today we begin to see possibilities because indeed the new wine is here to refresh us. The new wine is here to refresh us. The new wine is here to refresh us. To refresh us, to make us whole again, to heal every broken heart to heal every, every, every knee that, that is feeble and every hands that hang down to strengthen it, Lord. In this time and this season, Lord, you are making strength available like now before. You are making strength available. We are laying down, we are casting down whatever it is that we've known before that could be a limitation, a mitigating factor to the new, Lord. We will not box you in by our mindset and opinions that we've had in time past. Oh, Jesus, that's why the world was saying that, you know, if, you're a, if a man is new, is a, if anyone is a new creation in Christ, what happens? A new creation and all things are what? Have passed away. Behold, all things are what? Are new. There's a freshness and a newness upon the house, upon every one of us, upon, upon every one of us this time and this season. That thing that seems to us you couldn't do before, now you're receiving grace to do it. You're receiving grace to do it. You even excel beyond how you started out. Grace to do more. Because the Spirit is willing to do so much with us in this time where, 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 where power is going to be released like never before. In this time of supernatural, you know, outpouring where the, where, where the Spirit of God will fill in the heart of men. Where Christ will be revealed like never before. But it needs His children. It needs them to be ready to receive more of Him. 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 More of him, oh Jesus, Malaba Sitayaba Libra da Shikayaba, Emana Shitayaba Libra da Dado Shalaba, oh Jesus, Ebrodo Shitayaba, Emana Sikalaba do Shalaba Baba Baba, Ebrodo Shitayaba, oh Lord, you are causing us, Lord, to see newness, Lord, newness, Lord, newness, Lord, all oh, that you, 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 you communicate through your word, through our intimacy. That's why intimacy must be built, it must be, it must be fun to flame. It must be fun to flame. Oh Jesus. Brother Shitayaba Libra Sholaba. Oh, God is actually taking us into new dimensions. Even in our walk with Him, He's taking us into new dimensions. With our grace, you know, we begin to understand things even more. You know, the level of our of our, of our perception increases. Increases. Incre- heightens. Heightens. As a place of work. That we seem to be as if no one can really, no one has really figured out. You are, we, are, we are receiving grace to figure it out supernaturally in the name of by reason of the new wine that is placed on our inside, that is being poured forth from on high to receive and to accommodate it. And our heart is, is, is receptive to it, it's receptive to it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' name we prayed. For in Jesus' name we prayed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm done. Wasn't that a good word? Amen. Glory to God. Can we say God bless you, ma'am? Hallelujah. That was such a refreshing time. 